We tread new ground by bringing you football on the new artificial surface at Queen's Park Rangers as QPR face their London neighbours Crystal Palace. Over the past 12 months the clubs have done such a lot of transfer business together well yesterday it was almost like an old boys reunion but the biggest talking point of all of course was the pitch itself. Well it looks like real grass uh, Terry but what sort of game can we expect on it today? Um, well it's a game where you have got to be very careful with the ball and what I find is all the things you preach when we're training on here is uh, just magnifies what you should be doing anyway. You've got to have a good first touch of the ball, you've got to have a lot of care on your pass and otherwise if you hit it in a general direction which you're inclined to do on grass or other pitches that it will run away from people. So you've got to be precise and I think in the end that will uh, cause players to be a lot better players through it. What detracts from it at the moment from the game? What are the things against the surface at the moment? Um, Mainly because it's brand new. If we've always had it, I think we would always be happy with it. But when you've got players that have played all their life on something different, it's natural that they're a little bit concerned about change. Yes, people talk about friction marks, burns and so on, if they go in uh, and fall on the, on the surface. What about that? Um, yes, the worst two burns we've had was Tony Curry and Fennick, Terry Fennick, and that was on grass, so it's really? very difficult. Yeah. The, you, you, you're inclined to um, graze, but it's more superficial. It stings for a while, but... That's an occupational hazard. Well, as well as the pitch, something else is new here. 32 private boxes costing from £4,000 a season upwards. And so it's a big day for the lucky people watching football this way. It's a big day, too, for five of this Queen's Park Rangers side. They've got a bit of a score to settle against old teammates. They used to be at Crystal Palace. John Burridge, Terry Fenwick, Clive Allen, Mike Flanagan and Tony Seeley. They all had spells at Selhurst Park. And Jerry Francis did as well, but he's out of the side today. Tactically, Rangers will have uh, Fenwick at right back, uh, Ian Gillard at left back, with a former Brighton man, John Gregory, moved into midfield. And to add to the togetherness of it all, two of the Palace players were once here at Queen's Park Rangers, Steve Wicks and Tommy Langley. This indeed is the same Palace side that we saw play with such style on the big match last weekend and beat Charlton 2-0. for Rangers. Everything still starts with Tony Curry this time trying to get Allen and a bit of freedom down the touchline there, but there's no doubt about it that the star of this show at the moment is this fellow here, Billy Gilbert. Had a really excellent game at the back for Crystal Palace. He's got in some tackles when they badly wanted them. And a little chip there to the far side. Curry's coming in. Oh, yes! It's there in the end from Stonewall. No wonder they're going around Ian Gillard because he set that up perfectly by beating Brian Basson. Here he comes now as he gets the better of Basson. And it's a really delightful little chip that he puts in. Floated to the far side, Curry is there for that, headed down and lashed into the net by Stainwell. Price versus Gregory, Price winning it, Curry turning it in here for Waddock, a little knock down there for Gregory, played in again this time for Stainrod. And a shot from a long way out, forcing the save from Barron. Allen trying to pick up something on the turn, but good speculative shot there by Stainrod. And a good save by the keeper. Allen. On for that left foot, scotching just by the post. It almost seemed to gain pace off this surface. And in fact, the referee has given... Uh, corner, suggesting that Paul Barron might have just got a touch. Well, he might well have done. So, corner to Rangers, floated towards the near post. There are plenty of uh, Palace defenders there, Hilaire, the ball going in to touch. And the Palace, Sam Billy Hughes warming up.
looking to get to that by line. And a penalty given. A handball by Smiley as he challenged for Hazel. Smiley can't believe it, but the referee, without hesitation, pointed to the spot and has now got some protests coming from Crystal Palace defenders, and his book is out. decided that it wasn't. A name has gone into Clive Thomas's book. I think Jim Cannon, the Palace captain. And so Clive Allen now with the opportunity of putting Rangers two into the lead. And he saved it, Barron, superbly. I must say it looked to me as though he moved before that kick was taken. But maybe in the end justice was done because there was well, now we've had a good look at that artificial surface, and certainly it's an unnatural game by traditional standards. I thought yesterday that few of the players could really cope with the bounce and the pace of the ball, but these are early days in a very bold experiment, and the Crystal Palace manager, Dario Grady, recognises that. But all along, I think he has been slightly wary about it. Uh, asked me what I uh, thought about the Palace the um, experiment here and I said I thought it was a great idea the experiment and um, I was glad it wasn't us but I was quite happy to come and play on it and uh, whatever advantage that may or may not give the opposition in a league basis because I've got 41 other games to catch mm. up but if it was a one-off game I said I wouldn't be happy playing there uh, say in the quarterfinals of the, of the cup when the opposition were used to the pitch and we weren't and that if the rules allowed me to uh, object I would but if they didn't, I'd, I'd play and do the, uh, make the best of it. And do you feel the same way now? May I just press you on that point, having seen your team here today? I mean, if, for example, you get drawn against QPR in the third round of the Cup, what's your here? What's your attitude going to be now? If, the, uh, if we're drawn here in the third round of the FA Cup and the uh, rules say we have to play, we'll come here and do the best we can and we'll try to prepare ourselves for a victory. Well, Tony Curry showing that the really skillful players will prosper on that artificial surface. And indeed, Tony dominated proceedings long enough to bring Rangers the points. And it might have been easier for them if Clive Allen had uh, struck home that second-half penalty. I thought that Neil Smiley was a little unlucky. The abnormal bounce on the pitch, I think, may have caught him out a bit. And I'm just wondering if that was deliberate handball. But certainly justice was done when Paul Barron saved. But did he move before Clive Allen struck the ball? You can see clearly his feet are moving well before the ball was struck. But in its way, I think rough justice was done. There was a highly charged atmosphere there yesterday in a stadium that I believe should be the target for so many other clubs to aim for. Superbly modern, capacity of 27,000, but with 19,000 seats. That's perfect for spectators. There was, though, an incident when a spectator ran onto the pitch and appeared to punch the Rangers goalkeeper John Burridge on the back of the neck. We have those pictures, and indeed we looked at them again today, but we thought in the end, why on earth should we glorify somebody who clearly went along to Loftus Road yesterday not to watch the football? So we didn't show them.